Hello and welcome to Football Not In Focus. Right now the focus is on racism. It's a subject many of us find uncomfortable and it's a conversation the football world often has to have. But realistically, it's not just a problem in football. It's society's problem. And it won't go away until we really deal with it head on. Finally, that's happening. The death of George Floyd was the tip of a very large iceberg. And we are all waking up to what's really going on. And now that we're awake, we can't start napping. This past week, we've seen protests happening all over the UK in support of Black Lives Matter. With big names from football, sport, TV and social media taking a stand and speaking out at protests and in the media. And there have been plenty of peaceful protests happening, including at clubs training grounds. And there's also been tributes on the pitch from Weston McKenney, Jada Sancho, Akimi and Marcus Thurum, whose dad Lillian was a World Cup winner and a big anti-racism campaigner. He even did a powerful talk at the Slavery Museum in Liverpool in 2008. Meanwhile, away from the pitch and protests, David Beckham may have been pictured popping into his local chippy in the last week, but reports say the star is in talks to make an interactive cooking show for the BBC and Netflix. Being close friends with Gordon Ramsay, apparently he's replaced football with baking as his main passion, cooking almost daily with daughter Harper. He even got a pile of kitchenware for his 45th birthday last month. Now, it's unclear whether David will host the programme himself, but he'll certainly need to perfect those skills if reports that he'll move to Miami alone are true. Maybe he's planning on whipping up some pies half time. As the Premier League rolls back into action, Sky has announced a deal with FIFA game maker EA Sports to use the stadium soundtracks literally in the game. It seems viewers will be able to turn the background noise on and off and they can even be team specific, just like the real thing. Just uh, ignore the empty seats then, yeah? Now, let's cast our minds back to 2019. I know. It seems so far away now, but let me remind you of the most iconic moment from the year. Well, it turns out Rebecca might be getting ready for a Vardy party after all, as Colleen's lawyers have told her there could be a problem with the evidence she's gathered. So she sacked them. But desperate to continue the case, she's hired some super expensive media privacy specialists. You go, girl. Now, had COVID-19 not happened, I wouldn't have spent the last few months talking to a football. I'm a little bit worried though. He's not eating and he's awfully quiet. I think this lockdown's really got to him, you know. And Gareth Southgate would have been preparing his team, ready for the Euros. But instead, he's been observing them and praising his Black England stars for going on social media and using their fame to do good, spreading positive messages and calling for change, reaching beyond the wells of football. So what can we all do in football and beyond to help eradicate racism from our society? Stay informed on current events, educate ourselves on the history of oppression and white supremacy, listen to and amplify black voices, Speak up when you hear a racist comment. Sign petitions and contact government leaders. Acknowledge our privilege and blind spots. If we get called out on something, just apologise and learn from it and do better next time. We aren't perfect. We will make mistakes at times. Just don't repeat those mistakes. And finally, keep it up. Sustained efforts is what will lead us to lasting change. Thanks for watching. And football, be better. Black Lives Matter, on and off the pitch.